Arranging platitudes of the half-dead. Arranging the pillars. The stench. <laughs> All the time thinking. When will the devil take him? <laughs> when will the devil come for me? When will the devil take me? To friends! Shh! <laughs> 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 has withered her and wither my desire. Onyeki, mm -hmm. you're a man of uh, exotic tastes. Would you? Could you? I have <laughs> once for a bet. Oh. <laughs> well, in that case, what about the charming Princess Volkonsky? Or perhaps our delightful hostess, her mother? Well, both together? There's <laughs> <laughs> our philanderer an assignation. Oh, no, gentlemen. Oh, another courtesan. A headache. Oh. Until tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Invitations. 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 What's this? My uncle is dying. Finally, he wants me to visit him, to pay my respects. Oh, God. The sick bed. Administering medicine. If I might say, sir, his passing may prove to your benefit financially. I'd ask you. Needs must.
He hoped to see you before he died. I woke your uncle at dawn. Anisia, I will follow a different regime to that of my uncle. The notary is here to see you. I, Nikolai Alexeyevich Anyegin, born in the year 1768, being in healthy mind and stable memory, departing from this transitory world to face God, leave all the real estate and other property that belongs to me to the only son of my younger brother, Yevgeny Vasilich and Yegin. I leave my Prokofska estate, that is in the Proskov province, with a 20-window stone house. I leave my 500 souls, who have loved and respected and worked hard for their master. I leave the villages, Gerilova, Tushina, Babkina. And I leave the water meadows that lie along the Sorat River, the Twin Lakes at Kasagorovo. I leave my own house in Moscow, that is near the Church of the Raising, Raising of, of the, the Cross. Cross. I leave these documents for you. Should they meet with your approval, please sign this. I saw you with a, a young girl yesterday. Who was she? A local girl. Your uncle used to lend her books sometimes. And you are continuing this noble tradition? Yes. This is the book she borrowed? Yes. Some landowners came to see you while you were out. No visitors. Supposing they call again. Tell them I'm... I'm in mourning. Poaching. Who are you? I could shoot you. But I've been hunting in these woods all my life. My name's Lensky. Vladimir Lensky? From Krasnogore? No. Can't say I've heard of it. It it's the neighboring estate. So? So, it's a tradition. Our estate has mutual hunting rights with this estate. It goes back for centuries. <laughs> yes, but I don't. <laughs> You're old Nagin's nephew, aren't you? And if I was? I'd bow. Then bow. So?
So, are you going to shoot me then? Maybe for your warbling. <laughs> Poor Schubert, his body's barely in the grave and his work's being butchered by amateurs. Have you eaten? No. Are you hungry? Yes. Then come and have lunch. And then you'll shoot me? Only if you're dull. And bring your spoils. But just mine. At least the dogs appreciate Anicia's rustic cooking. As do I, but then I'm not accustomed to the fine cuisine of Petersburg. <laughs> oh. So, do you plan to stay here? <sighs> Maybe. You surprise me. Why? Surely it's no more surprising than the graduate of a great German university pursuing his um, poetic mm. ambitions here yeah. in the country? But that's different, you see. I was born here. My inspiration is here. Your inspiration? Mm -hmm. A woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But, I mean, don't you long to return to glamorous Petersburg and squander your inheritance? <laughs> On what? Petersburg, Monday night, the Volontsovs, asphyxiated all evening by the Herculean halitosis of a General Dachov. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday night, Chevalier guards a ball, a heaving pack of furs and spurs. Wednesday, a salon listening to a young poet, insufferably vapid verses. No offense, but I could continue. <laughs> it sounds uh, terrible. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Thank you for lunch. Uh, I must go. Go? Where is there to go? I'm expected somewhere. Where? The Lawrence. Who are they? Neighbours. Neighbours? Mm -hmm. Tell me, I'm intrigued. What do you talk about? Animal husbandry or jam making or do, do you all gather around the piano and sing off key? Surely no worse than Petersburg. <laughs> Touché. Please. Come again. Is that an order? No, it's a request. Well, I shall consider it. Have a pleasant evening with your, uh, your inspiration. <laughs> you should come and meet her. Yeah, maybe. Why on earth not? They're all longing to meet you. <laughs> oh, dear. Neighbors. Hello? Hello? They must be in the garden. I'll uh, go find her. Hello? Hello? Over here. Oh, there you are. Never I'm sorry, I'm delayed. This is done with me. Your daughter sings well. 
she, she does not, but it's kind of you to say so. Lingonberry water, Monsieur Nyegin. Thank you. It can be rather bitter. Uh, no, it's uh, most refreshing. Are you enjoying the country? And, uh, most pleasurable, yes. I imagine you find it rather lacking in sophistication. No, no not at all. I haven't decided yet. You're fortunate to have the choice. Marriage brought me here. Your husband is... Consumption. I'm sorry. When I first met Anyegin, he told me my singing desecrated Schubert. <laughs> ah, yes, but now Mademoiselle Olga has erased the memory. Thank you, Monsieur Anyegin. Should I sing another? There isn't time. We'll be dining soon. Afterwards, perhaps. Yes, I could sing the song that I wrote ah, for you. Monsieur Anyegin, this is my other daughter, Tatiana. <laughs> you don't believe me. I'm serious. I always believe you. Oh, it's so wonderful to meet you. Because my mother has so much about you. Oh. She taught me how to make it, but I never tell why it came up to Are her. you acquainted with Vladimir's mm -hmm. poems, Monsieur Anagin? Sadly, no. He reads them aloud to me. Well, a poet must address his muse. <laughs> <laughs> After he publishes his first collection, we hope to live in Petersburg. Well, perhaps we'll be neighbors. Perhaps. I look forward to it. Les amoureux, n'est-ce pas? They live in a dream and pay no attention to reality. I can't to go. <laughs> Mademoiselle Olga. If you want to live in the monde, you will have to improve your conversation. Monsieur Trique is attempting to introduce my daughters to the greater subtleties of the French language and to some of the more fashionable ideas of the day. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Russia has but the facade of a civilized society. At heart, she is uncouth, devoid of delicacy. Which is why an understanding of France and her literature is de rigueur in society. You think so? <laughs> I believe you are from Petersburg, Monsieur Onegin. Indeed. Do you know it? Of course. I was in the emploi of the Baranov family. Naturally, you know the general and his charming wife. Baranov. Yes, it does sound familiar. Wasn't there some scandal, the youngest daughter and her, her tutor? That was another Baranov, I believe. Hmm. Possibly. <laughs> Monsieur Anyegin, Andrei Petrovich is interested, as your neighbour, to know what you intend to do with your uncle's estate. I have to confess, I have no idea. Do with it? Oh, will you stay here and farm it yourself? No, I propose to rent it. Rent it? Mm -hmm. uh, to whom? To the people who farm it. Uh -huh. Serfs? Serfdom is a feudal practice. No civilized society should condone it. I'll drink to that. Preposterous. Dangerous. Surely, Monsieur Anyegin, your uncle did not leave you his estate to serve your whim. Is there any good reason why one should be bound by the wishes of the dead? I think there is every good reason. This country has no need of political experiments. Why should one human being own another because of an accident of birth? Tatiana, you do have some odd ideas. Real life brings us all to our senses. Don't you think, Monsieur Nyegin? It hasn't brought me to mind, madam. home to Petersburg, sir. There are a number of imminent engagements. 
Cancel them. Sir? Cancel them. You astonish me, sir. I astonish myself. Mademoiselle Larana. Monsieur Anjegen. You've come alone? I was wondering if I might borrow a book. Any particular book? A novel, perhaps? Any particular novel? <laughs> no. Come. Are you familiar with Richardson? Yes, I am. I uh, find him quite verbose. Verbose? My mother is suspicious of the influence of literature. The influence on whom? Anyone. Me, really. <laughs> but my uncle wasn't. It seems that he was fond of you. I read aloud to him when he became ill. That was kind of you. He was kind to me after my father died. May I look? Please. Product of idleness. Idleness. Are these your friends? No. Acquaintances. <laughs> Is Petersburg really as you draw it? I draw it as I see it. <laughs> Strange. You don't share your sister's craving for the city. I like the country. <laughs> this may interest you. I've just had it sent. Rousseau's uh, La Nouvelle Eloise. It's a novel written in the form of letters which pass between two lovers. Um, hmm. I should go. As you wish. Thank you. Were you serious about renting your land to the serfs? Yes. Yes. But the truth is, I'm idle, Mademoiselle Larina. I don't want the responsibility of managing the estate myself. I'm sorry if I disappoint you. Restless, aren't you? Am I? I'm resting. Perfectly content. <laughs> Let the indescribable remain so. 
Evgeny, would you read some of my poems? Why? I'd appreciate your opinion. Uh, my praise, you mean? <laughs> I can take criticism, you know. <laughs> A freak amongst poets. Why assume my work is bad? I don't, I'm sure it's... It's superb. Well, read it, damn you. It's Tanya. Tanya? Tatiana, Olga's sister. She's always wandering about here. Ah, oh, now you see, if I had been a poet like you, I suspect I'd have chosen Tatiana rather than Olga. I thought you liked Olga. Well, I, I do. So why do you prefer her sister? I don't. I merely said if I'd been a poet like you, I think I'd have chosen Tatiana rather than Olga. Oh, why? What's wrong with Olga? Nothing. She's... she's perfectly... Perfectly what? Perfectly perfect. And you love her and she loves you, so... But do you think Tatiana is, is what? I what? don't think what? Tatiana is anything. It must be very comforting to be so certain of your opinions. You must have feel so at home in the world. I don't feel at home anywhere. Why are you so offended? I merely remark that I just... I'm bored of your remarks. Provincial, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do, and so do you, if you're honest. Me, I'm. Um, am I provincial? Yes, yes, and yes very. <laughs> Please, Ev Evgeny, don't joke. I'm not. Well, if I'm not sophisticated enough for you. Why do we spend all this time together? Your sophistication, or lack of it, is irrelevant to me. Is it? Oh, hurry up, Narnia. Shh, let her do it. Oh, what's the point? I know who I'm going to marry. You'll marry a soldier. <laughs> you always say that. And Vladimir Lensky is the least soldierly man in all Russia. <laughs> you will also marry a soldier. I don't know any soldiers. You will. What does it say now? You can't change your fate.
sleep. Can't sleep. When you were young? When I was young. Were you in love when you were young? Oh. Those days we'd never heard of love. But you were married. That was God's will. I was only 13. And my Vanya was even younger. I spent all my time crying. They untwined my plaid and led me to the altar. You're not listening. What is it? Are you sick? I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Ask the officers from the garrison. Why? Nani said Tatiana was going to marry a soldier. She also said that you'd marry one. And I will. I will marry the soldier who has conquered my heart. <laughs> it's your move. Is it? Hmm. Uh. You've just taken your own rook. We should invite Monsieur Nagin. We should, I suppose. 
out of respect to his uncle. I think we should ask Tatiana. It's her name day, after all. Tanya? I don't think he'd want to come. No, he won't. He's above our country ways. I think he believes himself to be. I thought you were friends. We are, but... We had a disagreement. Politics? No. About me? Oh, no, no. I bet it was. Is he my secret admirer? Did you have to defend my honor? What did you argue about? Nothing of consequence. I think he needs a friend like you. Is that your way of saying you'd like him at your name day? Celebration of her name day, I would like to share with you a short ode which I have composed myself. En honor de notre chère Tatiana. On vous écoute, monsieur. <coughs> de celle dont le jour est fêté. Admirant le charme et la beauté. Son regard doux et enchanteur répand sur nous toute sa lueur. Don't I say, don't be late. Yes. Then why are you late? Brillez toujours. Belle Tatiani. I thought you said a small gathering. I lied. Thank you for your letter. I, I would like to apologize. I should never have declared my feelings. 
Yes, but you would not be yourself had you not. I admired your letter. Admired? Yes. Your candor. I was moved by it. However, I would not wish you to feel compromised by its being in my possession. It's, it's yours. Please. It's yours. senses, but lowers our perceptions. I'm not someone who is made for love or marriage. You, you, you do not return my feelings. I cannot. Can't you see where this leads? Hmm? A declaration? A kiss? A wedding, family, obligation, boredom, adultery. Is that really the future that you had in mind for yourself? No. No. I, I believe in, in the possibility of... Um, of what? I, I'm sorry if I've upset you, but please believe me, I say this for your own good. You are young and impressionable. Anyone, any stranger could have stumbled into your life and aroused your romantic imagination. I'm sorry if I've led you to believe uh, something else. Um, do you feel nothing? I am. Um... I am fond of you. I think that you are. I think you are charming. And I'm distressed that you are in pain. But the, the pain you feel today will, I suspect, leave you quite soon. I think it will evaporate. And then you'll be surprised that you ever felt for me. And in time, you'll meet someone more deserving of your love. Is that the future you predict for me? Yes. You interpret my heart, my nature, as you wish to believe it. In truth, I have no secret longing to be saved from myself. I think we should return to your guests.
mademoiselle. May I have the pleasure of the next dance? Vladimir, just one more dance, please. But you promised. seducing the woman I love. Aren't you? If that were true, it would not be difficult. You're blind. Your fiancé is young and foolish. And easy. Que Dieu bel mon ange. Viens ici un moment. Assieds-toi à côté de moi. from Vladimir. No. Why? You seem to want to read so much into everything. Look, there he is. He's here. I've missed you. I've missed you. Where have you been? I looked for you everywhere after the party. You disappeared. I left early. Will you forgive me? There is nothing to forgive. I should not have danced with him. Come here. Come. You weren't jealous, were you? You... You mean the world to me. And you to me. My love. I can't 
Come by tomorrow. In the afternoon. I'll be here. Yes. I finally worded a challenge. I congratulate you. A shame it should be inspired by a misunderstanding so easily resolved. You have gravely insulted your opponent. This is his only means of satisfaction. And I'm sure that you were very persuasive. I need hardly remind you, sir, that refusing would make you an object of ridicule. So you accept, then. the 15 minutes grace permitted. Where's your second, for God's sake? Monsieur Guillaume will act as my second. He's a servant. He's not acceptable. Well, then, we must abandon this charade. Vladimir. Uh, if you wish to communicate with your opponent, you will do so through me. Vladimir. You arrive late. You offer a manservant as a second. Your behavior is offensive. Is this necessary? You have insulted the honor of the woman I love. There can be no reconciliation. This is the misunderstanding. No! Reconciliation! Please, Vladimir. No! Re reconciliation! Beard. Five paces. from one another. Two. On my signal, you will start moving towards one another. You may fire at any time, but you must not cross the barrier marks. Three. Following a miss, the opponents are not permitted to move. Thus, he who shoots first shall allow his opponent the same distance for returning fire. shall be discharged in the direction of the opponent. In the event that neither opponent has been hit, both having fired, the duel shall start again. Ten paces!
up your first positions. He's gone. Left quite suddenly. He said not to expect him back for some time. Where did he go? He didn't say. 
I'll leave you now. Thank you. Olga overcame her grief, I knew she would. She's like me. Practical. She's made a very good match. A hussar. They seem very happy, both of them. But, uh, Katiana, she's quite a different creature. Oh, cousin, this isn't easy for me. <laughs> She's never expressed any interest in marriage. Whenever I mention it, she just says, oh, I can't. So that is why we've come to you. Extraordinary. Why ever not? Tatiana. If I met someone I could love, I would marry him. <laughs> love? <laughs> love is a luxury a girl in your position cannot afford. Then why else marry? Because it is time you were settled. Because you become a burden to your poor mother. Because you must. Let me give you some advice. You settle for the comfort of habit with a husband, perhaps even friendship, if you're lucky. Then, if you insist on this penchant for love, you find it outside the marriage bed. If I were to marry, I would be faithful. Ha, 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 that's very touching. Come here, Tatiana. Her skin is excellent. Her demeanor needs attention. Have you put on weight? Marsha. Of course, I can hardly see with my eyes. Ooh. We can only afford to stay here in St. Petersburg for one season. Cousin, you understand? It is enough. I will give her three presentations. In select circles, very grand. If she fails to make an impression, she will fetch up a spinster or a courtesan. Life can be cruel. Witness that Volkonsky girl, 30 years old, and she's still not married. I'm hurt. She will remain so. Dreadful girl.
Evgeny. Evgeny Onyegin. Cousin, how long have you been back? A week, maybe two. Where have you been? Traveling. For six years. Is the world that interesting? Sometimes, yes. Congratulations on your marriage. It was three years ago, but thank you. Oh, I apologize. I should have written. Indeed, you should. Apology accepted. Yes, child. There's a woman. Which one? She's just there in the red. I'll introduce you. Who is she? Come. Will you excuse me? I'd like to make an introduction. But of course. Good evening. Allow me to introduce my cousin Evgeny Onyegin. Monsieur Onyegin. Mademoiselle Laden. We've met before. Really? Yes, cousin. I saw you, Mademoiselle, but I wasn't sure that it was you. Is it? Yes. You seem surprised. No. Forgive me, merely. Will you forgive me, Evgeny? Tatiana's my wife. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Perhaps you might honor an old acquaintance with the next dance, Princess. In truth, I do not care for dancing, but thank you. Dearest, would you excuse me? I'm glad you could come. It's true, she never dances. I apologize, I was not aware that she... Okay, my apologies. Will you excuse me? A dull but necessary conversation awaits. What did the Austrian envoy have to say? Oh, the Austrian envoy. He spent the entire evening trying to make me reveal state secrets. <laughs> and Onyegin, did you speak further with him? No. He left early, I think. We should try to see more of him now that he's back in Petersburg. Mm -hmm. Strange fellow. He seemed different. Cases, gear. Sir, unpack them. Uh, <clears throat> we are staying in Petersburg, sir. Yes. Can I bring you anything, sir? No, just go back to bed.
Dearest Evgeny, I write to you. It's all I can do. And now I know it is in your power to punish my presuming heart. Yet if you have one drop of pity, you'll not abandon me to my unhappy fate. I am in love with you, and I must tell you this, or my heart, my heart which belongs to you, will surely break. I would never have revealed my shame to you if just once a week I might see you, exchange a word or two, and then think day and night of one thing alone till our next meeting. But you're unsociable, they say, that the country bores you. Is it true? Does the country bore you? Sometimes I wonder that you ever visited us. Why? I'd never have known you or known this agony and fever. I know that all my life's been leading me to this union with you. I recognized you at first sight and knew with certainty. I said to myself, it's him, he's come. Help me, resolve my doubts. Perhaps all this is nonsense, emptiness, a delusion, and, and quite another fate awaits me. Imagine it. I'm here alone, half out of my mind. I dread to read this over, my secret longing. I know that I can trust your honor, though I feel faint from shame and fear. See the bitter scorn blazing at me from your proud eyes when you have read my secret sorrow. When we first met, through chance I saw tenderness like a shooting star, but did not dare to put my faith in it. Then Lenski fell, which parted us still further. Then I tore my heart away from everything it loved, rootless, estranged from all I thought that liberty and peace would serve instead of happiness. My God, how wrong I was. How I've been punished. No. Day by day to be with you, follow you everywhere, alive to every smile, each movement of your eyes to dwell upon your soul's perfection. Listen to your voice, grow faint with yearning. That is bliss, and I'm cut off from it. My time is short each day, and hour is precious. Yet I just drag myself around in boredom. Every day a desert, unless when I wake up I know the day will bring a glimpse of you. If you but knew the flames that burn in me, which I attempt to beat down with my reason. But let it be. I cannot struggle against my feelings anymore. I am entirely in your will. Who was that, my dear? Your cousin. What did he have to say? Just thanking us for our hospitality. Was it badly written? <laughs> no, but unnecessary to keep.
You're cold. Princess. I said to my companion, I'm sure that you're Yegin and Yegin. <sighs> you see, I recognize you as quite some distance away. And it is you. Et voila. You're not skating. Oh, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. Like blister on my left heel on account of these boots, which is making it unbearable. Sorry. Well, my companion, she's waiting. I bet.
of triumph? A brief scandal? No. Why this change? Why has the sudden because side I... of me shocked you into this? I don't... I don't know. But seeing you again, I... I have seen myself. No. You... You are mistaken in, in what you say and in how you see me. No. I listened to you once all those years ago, and I... I feel that you acted honorably. I do not accuse you. Please, Tatiana, hear me. Please. Why? Hear me. Why? Because I'm noble now. Am I noble enough for you now? Evgeny, you should know that this, all of this, this life, my life, my life is empty and hollow. And I would happily exchange all that you see around me for the life that I had. You feel nothing. My husband is asleep upstairs. Tell me that you love me. I loved you once. A long time ago. You haven't forgotten. that my heart would heal. So will yours, Evgeny. And has it healed? Hmm? Has your heart healed? Oh, God. It hurts. <laughs> has it healed? Hmm? I don't think so. It hurts. Why? Why does it hurt? Why does it hurt? Because you are too late. Yes, you are too late for me. Save me. Save me. I cannot save you. Save me. I cannot. Tell me that you love me. Man's 
life to even stand. And I have given him my word. And I will be faithful to him. I will. You must go. Yes, you must go. You must leave me. Please. Please. I cannot see you again. You can never come back. Never. Just you come inside now, it's very cold. I like the cold. You have a letter for me? No, sir. Yes. Yeah. 